My name is Jeffrey Frankel, and in this series of YouTube videos, I will show you techniques and tips to reduce the time it takes to deal with questions in Paper 1 of the IB Chemistry exam at both standard level and higher level. There are different ways of dealing with this particular problem. You can either look for hexanes in each of these. You know hexane has six carbon atoms in a chain. And so you go through these, one, two, three, four, five, six. You have to be careful about that. That's clearly not part of the chain. That's a branch. So there's six there. And you do the same for this, and you find that six. And then you go to this, and it's one, two, three, four. And then you have to be careful about this. It's five, six. And then the, eth the other ethyl is part of a chain on that carbon. So you just have to be a bit careful. So that's six. And the same here. You find that six. So it doesn't really help you looking for hexane. Uh, in some questions of this nature, the, 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 the possibilities might be a pentane, five carbons, or a heptane, seven carbons, or even longer, or shorter. So, the hexane may, in some, in some cases, the, the hexane may give you an opportunity to find the correct answer. In this particular one, hexane is not the ideal. So, let's start with, the other one is 2,3-dibromo. Let's look for two bromos on adjacent carbon atoms. And lo and behold, there's one there, there's there, there, <laughs> there. So they don't help you, except that uh, this one, possibly it's on 3,4 carbon rather than two, three. So you're only eliminating one. What I found with these kind of questions, and maybe it's specific to this one, I don't know. It's a matter of trial. It really is a matter of trial and error. Is look for, the, there's a three bromo and a three methyl. So look for a bromo and a methyl on the same carbon. And very quickly you say, oh, Yes, there's a bromo and a methyl on the same carbon, uh, and it doesn't occur anywhere else. So that one was the way to find it, a bromo and a methyl on the same carbon. And very quickly you can find that. Now, the, each of these methods, uh, whether you go through hexane, looking for six carbon atoms, whether you're looking for two bromos on two adjacent carbons, or whether you're going for three bromo and three methyl, two, both on the same carbon atom, they're fairly quick once you get used to the idea of what you're looking for. Uh, so it doesn't, in a way, it doesn't really matter which one you go for. However, I would suggest that you go for something which is not so obvious. A 3-bromo and a 3-methyl. It's not so obvious. I would try those in future questions. The, the, the situation that is slightly unusual, 3-bromo, three 3-methyl. Three B is the answer. Okay, now... There is something I need to tell you. I have mentioned earlier about this thing of looking for a CHCH. And that is indicative of a double bond. And you may say, well, wait a minute, aren't these indicative of double bonds? No, the answer is no, because it's not CHCH. It's CHBR, CH, CHBR, C, BR, uh, CHBR, C, BR. And there are only two things attached when you see a CH and it's a double bond, it's usually very obvious because there's only two things attached to each of the carbons, that carbon and that carbon. And then what must be between them is a double bond. Let me write that out. CH, CH. Uh, uh, when it's something like this, and this could be a BR, and this could be a BR, or this is a CH3, CH, CH, CH3. I'm making this very clear so that people don't get confused. This is clearly a double bond, because when you look at it, that carbon only has two functional groups, and that carbon only has two functional groups. Therefore, there must be a double bond between the C and the C. But when you go CHBR, and this is CH3, and this is CH. BR, this is CH3, you can see immediately that there's three functional groups around that C. There's that one, there's that one, and there's that one, there's the three. And then it's linked to that carbon. 
And that carbon has three functional groups around it, the H, the Br, and the CH3, and it's linked to that carbon. So this is a saturated molecule, and this is the unsaturated molecule, and that's the unsaturated molecule. Okay, I just wanted to make that clear about this thing of looking for the CHCH in order to isolate a double bond, whereas here they are clearly saturated because it's CHBr, CBr, or CHBr, CHBr. Okay, so I'm... When you see bromine water is added to an alkene, doesn't matter what kind of alkene, bromine water is added to an alkene, you know that the colour of bromine water, which is either yellow or brown, disappears or becomes colourless. And therefore, the colour of bromine water disappears, that is clearly correct. The organic product form does not contain any carbon-carbon double bond. That is correct. Okay, so if one and two are correct, and then you look at this and you know this is not right, because bromine added to a double bond doesn't matter what kind of double bond, plus Br, Br is going to go to C, Br, C, Br, and then these can be any functional groups. In other words, the product is always a dibromo, dibromo, on two adjacent carbon atoms. And two bromohexane? No way. Yes, hexane is correct but it's not 2-bromohexane. It would be 1-2-dibromohexane. So that's not correct. So 1 and 2 are correct, 1 and 2 only. Hey. The other way of looking at this one is, if you're a little bit confused by this sentence, because that is a very long-winded sentence, as soon as you see this, you know, that is not correct. It's got to be dibromo. That is not correct. It has to be dibromo. So if you go through here, B is not correct, C is not correct, D is not correct, because each contains three. Therefore, A is the only answer. If some of these questions, there are two different ways of attacking them, or maybe more than two different ways of attacking them. As soon as you see an alcohol and dichromate, whether it's potassium dichromate or sodium dichromate with acid, you must immediately think it's going to be oxidized. There are circumstances where that is not true. I will discuss that in a minute. When you see a secondary alcohol, you know it's going to form a ketone. That H is disappearing and that H is disappearing. And the only one that fits is this. You don't even have to look at the others. And even if you did, you would see they're totally wrong because that is an acid. There's only two carbon atoms and uh, a secondary alcohol does not produce an acid. This is an acid with three carbon atoms, however, the secondary alcohol does not produce an acid, and this doesn't even have any, um, any acid or ketone or anything that's totally out of the question. This is one of those questions in paper one that is sufficiently easy so that you should be able to do it within maybe, say, 10 seconds. And then the extra time, the one minute and 20 seconds, can be used more profitably on other questions. So, let's have a look at it. One, two, three, four, five. Pentane. One, two. Methyl. Two methyl pentane. As simple as that. If you're having problems with this one, then I suggest you practice with all the alkanes that you can get hold of. Because there are not a lot of alkanes, but it is essential that you are able to do this one quickly because this is one of the simplest of the naming questions that there is. And I haven't seen anything as simple as this one. Most of them tend to be much more complicated. Than this. If you are lucky enough to get one as simple as this in your exam, take advantage of it. Do it in less than 10 seconds and save the rest of the time for other questions. This is one of those addition reactions which you need to be fast 
in solving it because this again is one of the simplest addition reactions they can give you. HBr, you must be able to see this in your mind. H, 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 Br. So, it is clearly A. And it should be possible to see this in your mind. It's anything to do with hydrogen coming off, forget it. That just doesn't happen. Uh, two bromines doesn't happen. It can't happen. Two bromine, it can't happen. Uh, so, the only thing it can be is this. And this is another one where it should be possible for you to see it immediately. If, again, if you're having difficulty seeing it within 10 seconds, I would suggest you practice with these kind of problems. In this question, the examiner is trying to assess whether you understand what the two components of methyl ethanoate are, what the two components of an ester are. Now, the two components of any ester are an alcohol and an acid. So, you can forget this one and you can forget that one. It's a test between A and D. And because the alcohol is methyl alcohol, then this is that, and this clearly is ethanoate. So the answer is D. This is another one that you should be able to do quickly. If you get one of these in your exam, it is necessary to be able to do this in less than 10 seconds in order to save time for other questions. Now let me briefly go through some of the problems with esters and some of the difficulties some students have with esters. Essentially, if they give you the formula of this there rather than the name, they would give it to you in this way, CH3, CH, CO, O, CH3. This is methyl ethanoate. Now, for me, if I saw this, or any ester, I, in my mind I cut it at this point and I add water, I add HO there and H there. There's methanol, there's ethanoic acid. Now, by writing this line there, I'm not suggesting anything about the mechanism of the reaction. I'm not suggesting anything about the mechanism of synthesis of esters or the mechanism of hydrolysis of esters into their components. I'm simply suggesting a way of naming the alcohol and the acid. Now, let me show you another way of writing this particular ester. It's CH3C. Some people put horizontal lines there and there, or they can put dots there and there. They are also acceptable ways of doing it. But again, in this case, it's the same as that. I would cut it there and put my HO and H there, and that is methanol and that's ethanoic acid. It's important to realize when you look at these two, which are the most common ways of writing esters, that the methyl, although, although written in the name first, comes last. There's methyl, there's methyl, but the name methyl comes first. The ethanoate, which is the acid, comes second in the name, but first in the formula. Okay. Now it could be reversed. This is perfectly possible to write CH3O, CO, CH3. Notice that if you break it there and you put H there and OH there, this becomes the acid. It's ethanoic acid because there's two carbon atoms. And this becomes the alcohol, and it's methanol because there's only one carbon atom. Now, this version is CH3OCOCH3. And again, in this case, you break it there, and that's OH and H. And there's methanol and there's ethanoic acid. So, if the examiner gives it to you as the name, then the first word is the alcohol. Methyl alcohol, ethyl, propyl, butyl, 
pentyl. Those are the possibilities for you. Or the acid. The second word is the acid. It could be methanoic acid, ethanoic acid, propanoic acid, butanoic acid, pentanoic acid. If he writes the formula down, if it's in this form, break it there, and there you've got methanol, and two carbons, ethanoic acid. There, methanol, two carbons, ethanoic acid, break it there. Methanol, two carbons, ethanoic acid. This one, break it there. Methanol, two carbons, ethanoic acid. Interestingly enough, it doesn't come up often, but there is a methanoic acid, which is HCOOH. And if you want to make the ester of that, HCOOCH3. So you break it there, and you've got OH and H. That's methanol, methanoic acid. One carbon, methanoic acid. So that's methyl methanoate. That is an unusual one, rare to be seen, but it does exist, methyl methanoic. Of course, you could have O, CH2, CH3, and that's COH, and that is 1, 2, ethyl methanoic. I hope that has helped you with esters, because the naming of esters is problematic for many students. In the IV, you are expected to know the simple forms of the UPAC rules. And when you see a ketone, you're expected to create the ketone in the with the lowest number possible. So this and this are not a ketone. That and that are the ketone. This has the lowest number the two, one, two, and just check that the methyls are three, three. One, two, three. And there are clearly two methyls on that carbon, and the whole thing is one, two, three, four. So it is three, three, dimethyl, butane, two, home. Thank you for watching. If you found this YouTube video helpful, please see my other YouTube videos. Thank you.